uh, where was I? <laughs> and um, so in, in Western nutrition, the, the uh, research, the billion dollar research around longevity, right? It's becoming this massive marketplace, right? And uh, I do study it quite vigorously and I go to all the sort of, you know, radical life extension conferences around America. And what's really, really interesting, from time to time, quite often, they're finally sort of stumbling across some of the tonic herbs that we've had in Chinese medicine for 6,000 years. <laughs> you know, for instance, this tea that you're drinking. Now, I hope that uh, a lot of you get hold of this tea tonight. It's called Spring Dragon. And the grass tea that is made out of is called gynostema. And this tea has 120 saponins in it. And there's no other plant on the planet that has 120 saponins. You've all heard of ginseng. Ginseng's a phenomenal uh, herb, but it, it only has 30 saponins. So this humble grass tea has 120 saponins. Saponins are, f for the want of uh, a longer explanation, that it's part of the uh, bioactive chemistry of the plant that's really, really good for the immune system, really, really good for the cells. And my point is that in these conferences, they found this active ingredient out of gynostema that starts to get right down into the ATP and starts to uh, help the cells uh, detoxify and all sorts of things. And of course, I snicker to myself because I go, well, we've been using that for 6,000 years, guys. Good on you for catching up. What's your name? And we're just doing a quick little introduction. Are you from New York? I'm from New Jersey. Okay. Good. And how did you find out about the program? Right. Yeah. yeah, well, hopefully we do come up when you Google nutrition schools. We have been around for 12 years, but we are a little bit humble. We, we're sort of not like a, we like a nice little intimate school and we don't really do a super bunch of advertising. We re rely a lot on word of mouth, right? But, uh, you know, we, we, people eventually come across us. Uh, so, and you're from Sweden? I guess born and raised, but I've been here for... And what's your background? What's what's your career? I was into arts photography okay. in my youth. And I'm right. a late bloomer, like you right. say. And Are I you still involved with photography? Uh, on and off, yeah. Right. Um, and um, I'm recovering from a, has some health setbacks. Okay. So I'm getting to the point where I can kind of come to the right place, haven't you? you? And exactly. So yeah. My whole idea is to, and I'm very passionate about, you know, healthy cooking herbs, you know, mm -hmm. anything, think out of the box mm -hmm. type of um, life. So I just want to, I think this would be a good fit for me. And uh, I'm just doing it to be able to give back and help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a lovely attitude. Uh, what's your name? I'm Crystal. And are you from New York? Yeah, I live in Brooklyn. Uh, my friend invited me. She's also on her way. Uh, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm actually a photographer as well. Oh, well, you've, you've <laughs> got the right place here in the front row. Is that your friend now? Or? Yes, that is. There you go. We were just talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and I've been a vegan for about a little over three years, so okay. I'm really into getting into different nutrition and just kind of figuring out what works for our body. I yeah. I thought this would be really interesting. Yeah, we, I always say that uh, the... Um, you know, the, the guidelines and principles and the ingredients of the longevity diet can be tweaked any way you want. So we get, you know, quite a few people who are vegan, vegetarian, and we also get meat eaters. I always say that if you're vegan, we're going to show you how to do it better. Because there's, you know, like e every ism has a little front and back. And you're talking to somebody who's been like for 40 years doing uh, health counseling. So I've kind of, in a way, kind of seen it all t to a degree. And um, the vegan diet, c c for some people, can be a little cooling. And uh, it's, it's kind of like a, it's a yin diet, very clean diet, a very honorable diet, you know, with the ethics and so forth. But sometimes, uh, because of its cooling nature, people can get into problems, you know often cold hands, cold feet, cold stagnation, and so forth. So you, I highly recommend that you study yin and yang. 
and then apply that to more like the, the vegan uh, application. You know? And um, it's the same, I always say, you know, if you're vegetarian, we, we'll, we'll show you how to do it better. And if you're a meat eater, we're going to show you how to do it better. Right? So it's, um, the, this curriculum actually has no dogma in it, and we study all of the food groups. And our approach is sort of the energetics. Some people, you know, constitutionally are more hot nature, so they can have a little bit more yin style diet. Some people are just cold. They get out, out of balance, they just get cold. So, you know, they have to avoid the fruits and excess salads and, and raw foods, and they have to get their, you know, their chi, their yang chi up. Otherwise, you know, they can really start to damage their immune system and their organs and their overall health. So we're constantly kind of playing with those dynamics in, the, in this training. We do do health assessment as well in this training. So we have a theme that you become your own doctor. So you learn the, the come on in, you can jump up the front here. Or Thank you. Just go for it, there's some room over there. But uh, we've been doing some introductions, but I think we'll get into it, folks, because um, uh, as advertised, this is uh, uh, Healing Nutrition 101. And so I've got, uh, I've prepared this uh, presentation for you last night, uh, and I've got quite a few slides here, so I think I should just um, uh, rip into this. So we've got here a blueprint for a long and happy life. So. Uh, I sincerely believe that the, the, the principles that we teach in this uh, curriculum really get to the heart of how to live a long, healthy life. And our foundation for that is diet. So yes, the focus of this curriculum is about diet, uh, getting your digestion back, simulating the food, uh, getting your circulatory system back, getting your immune system strong again, so that that physical foundation becomes strong again. You become like a samurai, right? And um, when you have that foundation, that physical foundation, then of course that starts to work into your circulatory system. So in the first year, pretty much you're focused on getting that digestive system and getting the, the new ingredients and the cooking styles and new recipes that you learn, kind of basically mastering that. And then after that first year, you know, digestion and your relationship with food really radically improves. The next year, your circulatory system starts to heal. So if you had cold hands and cold feet and sort of stuck energy, that starts to heal. The third year, your nervous system. So have you noticed that we're actually made up of three spirals in the body? Digestion, nervous system, circulatory system. So they're the three major ener energetics of the body that we work on in this curriculum. Now the influences, let's see what we've got here. Okay, and uh, we do call this the longevity diet because I want, I've always wanted something that was uh, open-ended, right? And not like associated with this, that, or the other. And also, my strong influences are primarily two things. First of all, traditional Chinese medicine. Um, that's my background and that's, you know, acupuncture and blah, 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 blah. And that's how, uh, you know, clinically, that's what I got involved with like 40 years ago and education and so forth. Um, but uh, there was this famous American dentist in the 1930s who visited cultures of longevity, and you could do that in the 1930s, before the Second World War, because after the Second World War, <laughs> the whole world kind of went crazy with its food patterns. I mean, really crazy. Our modern diet is nowhere near what our uh, grandparents and our immediate ancestors were eating. So he was able to visit uh, over 15 cultures of longevity that weren't contaminated with the Western industrialized diet. So they weren't drinking Coca-Cola and so forth. Unfortunately, now these cultures are really, really hard to find. I've done a lot of traveling. I've done like over 80 countries. For instance, I've been to Tibet four times. And you're in the middle of the mountains and, you know, guess what? There's what? A little fridge there with Coca-Cola, right? Unfortunately. So his name was Weston Price. 
And he was very academic, even though he lived, you know, every summer and his wife would travel to these cultures of long, and he would live with these cultures, the Maori people of New Zealand. He lived there for, you know, six months of the year, Aboriginal people, South uh, European people, Native American, Northern Chinese, etc. over 15 cultures. And he was able to put these um, uh, kind of principles down into just two publications, you know that hardly anybody read, <laughs> right, right. and basically it has all the secrets to longevity because these people lived long, healthy lives, they had no degenerative disease, they had no cancer, they had no diabetes, they had no respiratory problems, they had wonderful teeth, right? they didn't have toothpaste, they didn't have toothbrushes, right? they had a happy temperament. Right? So, uh, and they were, this was not the low-fat diet, Right? that everybody has been brainwashed in for the last kind of like 50 years now. Well, 40 years ago, I was saying that that is a load of... All the Western nutritionists were saying, low fat, low fat. The propaganda from TV, the industrialists, agri uh, mono agriculturing, really laid that on in a really, really clever way. But 40 years ago, I was saying, no, that's crazy stuff. There's no science around it. There's no clinical evidence around it. And in our background from Chinese medicine, we actually use fats and always use fats to build up the deep essence, the deep gene, the deep um, hormone structure of the body. So I combine cultures of longevity with the energetics of Chinese medicine. And then I had to modernize it and bring it to the Australian culture. I mean, you know, even though we draw on Chinese medicine, our food doesn't look like a Chinese restaurant. Get the idea? We, we, we look at these principles and guidelines and then bring it into our modern culture. And that was pretty much the beginning of this curriculum. Those two major influences, cultures of longevity and then the energetics. And uh, then people wanted to uh, be uh, trained in this. I was doing this in, a, in Australia. I was working a lot with people with cancer and also at that time a lot with HIV. Because at that time, I'm going back to the 80s now, they didn't have any drugs for HIV. So that whole community was like really, really enthusiastic about natural health, natural diet, uh, things like, you know, Chinese medicine and macrobiotics and all of that. There was like, you know, thousands of people wanting to get, uh, you know, dietary advice, etc. So I was very, very involved with that. And I, then I needed to start to train other people to do this work. So that's pretty much how this combination, longevity diet and health coaching, uh, came about. Uh, so come on in, guys, but uh, you know that you might have to separate a little bit if you don't mind, or you could get two chairs at the back there together if you wanted to. Um, so yes, it's been established now for 35 years. Uh, what I'm pointing out to you is I have not had to change the curriculum for 35 years. Now you might have noticed that the themes coming through from uh, some authors in the last couple of years and, and what you might find on the internet now, and you might have even come across the ketogenic diet, they're finally saying, ooh, we need a good high quality fats. Have you noticed that? Well, we were saying that 40 years ago is because we've got clear and constant uh, guidelines that we operate from. The other thing about the curriculum is that it's practical. A lot of people learn uh, nutrition uh, through uh, just reading and lectures and so forth. What I noticed with my clients was that they really needed to be shown how to put all of this together. And they really needed to be around some experienced, passionate chefs, right? One of the greatest compliments that I ever got in my life was uh, a lady who did this training and she had like, she had, PH, she had a PhD in nutrition. She's just done a lot of uh, theoretical work around nutrition. And she still didn't know what to eat for breakfast. This is a true story. She still didn't, she was still confused about what to eat for breakfast. Well, this curriculum just nailed it for her. You know, the first cook, the second module that you learn from us is a practical cooking class. 
where we show you immediately how you can make a variety of things for breakfast, get the taste happening there, how to get the, the fats in there so your blood sugars get uh, stabilized so that you have the types of breakfast that we're talking about, you can go for all day if you wanted to. I often just have two meals a day and I don't have any problems with my energy level. So there's an art to that. There's an art to being how to get those blood sugar levels stabilized. So we're very grounded, hands-on, practical. Uh, the curriculum itself is, is geared up like philosophy, then practical. Philosophy, then practical. Philosophy, then practical. In fact, we have four practical trainings over those 10 modules, with a fifth one, a little practical as well, with uh, uh, Leifa Hafaday doing the Ayurvedic. So yes, we do draw on uh, Ayurvedic. Uh, but let's get back to this. So I will, uh, as we go through tonight, mention some of the faculty. Um, there's an emphasis on prevention, of course, like when you get into really what, how a human being can uh, uh, eat and operate, then you avoid getting these illnesses right, in the first place. That's really the heart of it. However, food as therapy uh, and it's curative, right? People have cured themselves in this curriculum of uh, brain cancers, diabetes, um, you know, uh, uh, um, quite common amongst folks doing the course of courses, digestive syndromes and so forth. So very, food, food as medicine is the theme of this curriculum. Uh, we teach you how to become 100% responsible for your own health. We call it Be Your Own Doctor. Uh, we have a, we, we cover a lot of, you know, everything from superfoods to, to also using the herbs in cooking. So food is one level of medicine, and it's your foundation, but the real secret to getting some really strong medicine, and the real secret to life extension, right, you know, to really push yourself up there to 150 years, 180 years, which is the way we talk about it, the whole th thing of 100, that's easy, right? The, the thing of 150, 160, that's, that's where you have got to know the tonic herbs, right? These herbs are clever, they're intelligent, they're strong, they're directed, and they go straight into the organs, straight into the kidney chi, straight into the blood, straight into the immune system, right? And it's economical. We show you how to do it the old-fashioned way. Basically, it's kind of like grandma's cooking from China. Right? When you get up to that level. Yes, we have to borrow a lot from Chinese medicine to be able to do that. You can do it to a degree with Western herbs, you know, to a degree. But our background to achieve this is from the Chinese medicine perspective. Now that folklore medicine is a dying art in China. Modern Chinese, they're just interested in, you know, Coca-Cola and Kentucky Fried Chicken and they're... Their health statistics are starting to catch up with us, unfortunately, because of the influence of the, the Western diet. So it doesn't take too much. Like in herbalism, Chinese herbalism, we actually have 500 herbs, right? You guys only have to use 10 of them. And that's called the tonic culinary herbs. So it's not like you have to sort of master you know, a four-year course and learning 500 herbs, no, that's, that's when you become like a, a professional to make a, a herbal formula for, for somebody, like the Chinese doctor down at Chinatown, yeah? No, this is using the culinary herbs that you can learn to, like, build your blood up, build your chi, uh, get the warmth energy happening in the wintertime, or, ha you know, taking the herbs that can really cool you down quickly in the summer, right? So it's an advanced level of food energetics. Not, it's not just gourmet whole food cooking, that's where we start you off. We get you up to an advanced level, all within uh, 10 modules. Uh, and of course we've got business development and nutritional coaching interwoven into this program. So I know that uh, some of you are very interested in the career pathway with this, so that we em em uh, embody that into, in the training. Our last weekend particularly is very much about coaching and, and business uh, training, but we, we weave it in as we go through the curriculum over the year. <coughs> it is a theme of East me Meeting West, 
uh, we draw on, these are the major influences of, of us in this curriculum. Uh, and to a degree, macrobiotics, macrobiotic uh, ingredients we encompass. Uh, you know, macrobiotics and, and uh, the Rudolf Steiner movement were the pioneers back in the 60s of the modern health food revolution. It was those guys that put organic farming back on the map. It was those guys that started to write about spirituality and food, food and personal development. It was those guys that brought these incredible healing foods from Asia, like miso, and reminded us about eating seaweeds again, and reminded us about how important sea salt was, and all sorts of things, right? Uh, <clears throat> so one of the key things here is uh, no dogma in the training. We, study, we stu do study all of the food groups. Uh, in the practical classes, though, we do make... Um, for instance, we make a vegan variety, a vegetarian variety, and for instance, you know, like your, uh, well, your third cooking class with um, Inga is kind of very vegetarian vegan anyway because it's um, how to work with the superfoods and make elixirs. By that stage, you're starting to understand the three treasures of Chinese medicine, the Jing, which is your constitutional energy. You'll start to understand what qi and blood is to the body, and you'll start to understand the spirit. So in that uh, uh, module, it's very kind of, there's not much animal food involved with that at all. In fact, there's none. The, some of the other classes, like we, we show you how to do the bone broths, which are really, really important. But then we can also uh, do it like with uh, uh, vegetable stock. Uh, in Nam Singh's class, uh, he uses a little bit more animal food because he's coming from a perspective of the therapy of food, like how to get your... Uh, build your blood if you're uh, blood deficient and so forth. Blood deficient, if you're blood deficient in Chinese medicine there's like 500 symptoms that way. I could read them all off. 500 symptoms that way. If you're qi deficient there's like 500 symptoms that way. If you get your blood and qi going again you get rid of a lot of those symptoms. So that's our focus. Digestion and building blood, building qi. Now detox happens naturally and when you get your organs starting to be strong again, that happens naturally. And when you stop putting the acid and the toxins into the body, it happens naturally. But we do discuss uh, detox protocols. But there's an obsession going on, and this is one of the things that we get into this curriculum, is all the modern myths around food and the phobias around food. And this like ridiculous nonsense about not eating any beans because they've got the lectins in it. Have you come across that one? He just made five million dollars, that guy. And, and like three quarters of the world depends on eating beans for day-to-day -day nutrition. I just don't get it sometimes. What people forget is there are, there's a wisdom around food from our ancestors, and they worked out how to make those sort of foods digestible. Lectins are in everything. They're in vegetables, they're in beans and grains. Why do you think Aboriginal people took grains and beans, put them into a sack, put it in the river for seven days, and then came back and then cooked it? Right? So all we need to do is get our wisdom back from our ancestors, put it back into our modern life, and you can get rid of all of those crazy ideas going on about, oh, you shouldn't even eat any grains anymore, right? So we're going to discuss that a lot in this uh, curriculum. We're going to get rid of all those myths. We're going to just start again. We're going to look at the wisdom, look at the energetics. We're going to look at how to make things digestible. And we're going to look at maybe proportions. Yes, for some people, maybe you don't use that for a year. You know, get the idea? Good. Um, so, uh, better keep moving here. So, <coughs> for instance, we really get into, for instance, uh, the, tr the whole traditional theme around good quality fats and oils. Uh, you might have come across, uh, you know, how uh, coconut oil is really, really good for you. Well, I came across coconut oil 40 years ago. Where was I? Bali. Walking around Bali and people had gorgeous skin. Gorgeous hair, <laughs> gorgeous complexion. And, I'm going, and then I'm going into their homes and what are they cooking with? Coconut oil. The Western nutritionists at that time were saying, oh my God, 
It's got saturated fat. Don't have coconut. I wrote an article in Australia, uh, um, and I researched how uh, incredible coconut oil, and of course at that time, all the naturopaths bagged me, all the doctors bagged me, you know, like, because, oh my God. <laughs> Get the idea? Go back to some wisdom, is the point here. And we've all learned now how wonderful coconut oil is, right? Well, there's some other traditional oils here that maybe some of you might think about getting back to. Unfortunately, when I was six years old, my mother switched from eating wonderful kiwi, kiwi is a word for New Zealand, uh, butter to margarine because she was told by the propaganda and the Western nutritionists and the advertising and the industrialists to start having these vegetable oils, right? And that, folks, is the beginning of the end, those ve vegetable oils, highly inflammatory, omega-6 off the chart, you know? So we're very much uh, about getting back to some of these um, uh, uh, traditional oils. If you're vegan, we, we have to study it a little bit better as well, you know? Um, it gets a little tricky. That's one of the areas with vegan that it's, it's really, really tricky, right? Uh, so that's why sometimes some of the vegans in the class have gone, well, I might start having some ghee. <laughs> right? And you can pretty much cover what you need from just having the ghee like they have in uh, the vegetarian uh, tribes of India. Right? So there's ways and means. So if there's anything that you learn tonight from this uh, course, I but encourage you to uh, ask questions to your grandmother and grandfather. What were they eating as children? And bring some of that into your life and get off the modern vegetable oils, right? Like these guys here, right? Canola, safflower. Now a little bit of this and a little bit of that's not gonna kill you, especially if you go back to some of these more traditional uh, oils. This is what it looks like, guys. This is what industrial vegetable oil process, that's what people have been consuming for the last 40 years. Up to the Second World War, we weren't. You know, and our rates of, you know, have you, I mean, what drives a lot of us with, you know, strong passion in this world uh, of health uh, philosophy and uh, being a social activist around people making these changes is the health st statistics. I mean, we now have one in three people with cancer and one in, one in four people with heart disease and one in seven get respiratory problems and, you know, the sleeping giant of autism and all sorts of things, you know, Alzheimer's is uh, rising. If you just look back, you know, in the 1930s, we didn't have that. At the turn of the century, we had like one in 150 getting cancer, right? So you have to ask yourself, what's going on? What changed? What sh shifted there? And one of them is the toxic uh, vegetable oils. There's some other things too, like even things like the microwave oven, right? Forget it, guys. You don't want that kind of vibration going into your body, right? You know, that whole kind of convenience thing, you just want to get rid of and just go back to some... Uh, you know, uh, like slow cooking and so forth. So look, these, uh, we don't have time to really get into it tonight, but uh, it just causes absolute havoc uh, in, the, in the body. A whole list here. <coughs> uh, some conditions obviously that can be improved with nutrient dense foods. A little bit of comparison about what I've talked about so far. The SAD is the standard American diet. That's pretty much what 99% of Americans are eating now. And we're shifting over to unrefined organic, whole, nutrient dense, uh, et cetera. Uh, we're more like uh, into the, you know, the, the slow food, not the fast food. Um, and the deep ecology and reverence for animal food. When it comes to animal food, uh, we, if you're eating animal food, you only need a small amount and we'll show you, and there's a lot of benefits to it in terms of the chi and the blood and, and it's yang and warming nature and particularly in the winter time and depending on your health and energy needs, right? And we're going to discuss how we can get really high quality animal food and how to balance it with vegetable food. 
there's a nice little proportion that we work with, with one part animal food to five to seven parts vegetable food, right? So it's not so much your Anglo-Saxon style cooking. But one thing I'd like to encourage you that uh, if you are eating animal food, then go back to some of the, um, you know, like making casseroles, making soups out of your animal food. It's when you heat animal foods with high heat, that's when you get the carcinogenic qualities out of it. So we're very much into sort of like soups and broths and casseroles and that sort of easy to digest types of food. That's something that we really emphasize in this training. Of course, in the curriculum, we discuss all of these things like locally grown, um, <coughs> as opposed to, uh, and a holistic understanding as opposed to a fragmented uh, view of nutrition. So we, entered, we really get into the uh, fermented foods. You might have heard the term probiotic. That's becoming very, very, uh, you know, kind of modern, a bit of a buzzword now. But of course, that goes way, way, way back. Uh, every culture has had some sort of probiotic uh, fermented food. The best way, guys, to get your probiotics is not to be taking it at this stage as a, um, a pill, right? Unless you travel a lot, that can be a, a prop. The best way is just taking a little bit of fermented food every day. That's the best way to begin with. And then, you know, you might want to take a, an extra probiotic from time to time. There's just a world of difference with what nature can do with that matrix, that magical matrix that nature does, as opposed to what uh, science and, you know, our human thinking comes up with. You know, it's like a completely different matrix. So you're much better off with your kimchi, your sauerkraut, your misos, your apple cider and so forth. Uh, we really get into the use of seaweeds, uh, incredibly alkalizing and strengthening to the uh, immune system. The longevity diet is a minerally rich diet. We need over 100 trace minerals to keep that immune system going. You need to do something every day for your immune system. The human immune system is very, very vulnerable. It's like a teenager and it hasn't found itself, right? And it, can, it, it just gets lost, seriously. Our human immune system is very fragile, as opposed to the other animals. Have you not noticed? The other animals do a pretty damn good job. They have, you know, like they don't have much autoimmune diseases, like three or four, right? You know, we have dozens, right? So we have to get clever about, you know, getting an intelligent, adaptive immune system. And what we use in this uh, curriculum is for instance, the seaweeds, because that provides the really deep nourishment that you need, as well as the medicinal mushrooms. We've been teaching about medicinal mushrooms for 40 years, ago, for 40 years now, and uh, you know, we show you how to combine them into soups, broths, uh, make teas from them, and also make tinctures uh, from them. And even just you know, putting a few drops of uh, uh, shaga or rishi into a tea like this uh, each day, and bang, you've done it, right? But you've got to build up that intelligence, that adaptability for the immune system. Otherwise, you're just always, what? Prone to the, you know, the uh, cold or the little bug. And maybe in 15 years' time, there's some super bugs that are happening. Well, if you start this guidelines, these principles, get into, you know, the deep nutrition, start using the medicinal mushrooms, you will have no fear of all the superbugs that are going to come out in 15 years that could wipe out tens of thousands of people in one go. Your immune system will be strong, adaptive, intelligent. And your children's immune system will be strong, adaptive, and intelligent. They don't have to, you don't have to worry about bugs going around, is what I'm saying. Um, so cooking classes, teaching, counseling, eight step, a little, um, you know, uh, a little thing here, eight steps to become a self-healing master. Well, the right mental attitude and sense of uh, open. Um, remember, this is kind of more like the philosophy and wisdom around food rather than the left brain kind of aspect that we like to bring in like a left and right brain aspect to it. Um, so uh, if you are going to be doing the curriculum, you have to be a little bit more open-minded to things like 
yin and yang and the chi and we, you know, living in a vibrational world. Right? That's pretty much the angle that we uh, use qu uh, uh, quite a bit. And uh, like a, a passion for working with others and uh, giving to others and, you know, the whole sort of tender loving care that, you know, friends and family and your community uh, needs. Uh, developing adaptability, very, very important. So we show you how to eat for the seasons because when your body goes into that season, it does a lot of healing. We use the five element theory a lot in this curriculum. Uh, you might have heard of it, water, wood, fire, earth and metal. This takes us through the winter, the spring, the summer, the late summer and the autumn. So we show you the tastes, the cooking styles, uh, and the food groups that start to harmonize with that. So you start to really embed yourself into your uh, environment, into that climate, right? So that your uh, adaptability becomes very, very strong. And that to us is the de definition of, of health, is your ability to be able to adapt to the changing circumstances around you. So what it means is if you go traveling, you'll know what to eat and you won't get sick. Right? Uh, if when, you, when the winter comes and the snow's outside, you will know what to eat that you can go jumping out into that snow and feel great and you won't be going like, oh, it's too cold for me. And you'll know what to eat when the really, really hot summer um, comes through. You'll know the energetics of what to eat, like the four calling food. So you'll be able to adapt to all of these uh, uh, changes around you. Very, very important in terms of self-mastery. So, you see, food, you know, in the West, we, we think of things very mechanically. You know, we just say, oh, it's food, it's made up of proteins and so forth. Just like our organs, we think of them as, what, a piece of meat, don't we? You know, the spleen, the liver. Well, in Chinese medicine, this is not <laughs> a piece of meat. Like, the kidneys represent your willpower, the kidney chi in the body strengthens your, um, the hair on your head, your spine, your, the bones of the body, um, your sense of uh, ad adaption and so forth. So you start to learn a whole new landscape of internal medicine. Right? And when it comes to food, you start to understand that actual food has actually come on a long journey. When you start to look at food, well, okay, where does it come from? It's come from, you know, the air. And the, and the sun and of course we've got some chemicals there and then when you look at the chemicals they're made up of molecules and when you start to look at the molecules they're made up of you know where I'm going with this don't you the, you know now we're going down the rabbit hole so to speak and so yes we start to get into the atomics you know oh and then we st we're desperately you know in the west still trying to find some material there and oh okay we got some atoms on some electrons right but it eventually just gets down to what chi or vibration even the sense of a, what we call a particle was breaking down in modern physics you know where uh, my friend Al and I were really really into modern physics and finding um, kind of like uh, new ways of energy production I've got another company called breakthrough technologies where we've been supporting inventors and all of that. And basically you get down to, there's no such thing as even a particle, it's just standing waves, right? So food has come from this enormous journey. You know, there's a sense of sacredness here, right? So yes, food is from the environment. The environment is from, you know, the cosmos. Now when you take food into the body, it goes on its journey, right? You break down food into its components, yes, but eventually it becomes your blood. And then your blood f feeds your cells, your tissues, your organs, and ultimately it feeds your consciousness. So food, this little area here, guys, this little one here, is the interchange between this huge outer world, the infinite universe, and your inner world. That's the bridge between the outer and the inner. So when you learn how to start to make those uh, kind of uh, uh, harmonies between the inner and outer, your blood gets stronger, your organs get stronger, your, um, your immune get, your system gets stronger. So that's how food becomes your medicine because you start to change the 
chemistry of your blood. Now you might have heard of even simple things like, you know, the modern diet is a very acid diet, isn't it? And acid just starts to break down the immune system and it's highly inflammatory and, it, you know, people start to get diabetes and so forth. So just getting a little bit more shifted to an alkaline-based diet, which certainly the longevity diet is, right? your blood gets stronger, your cells can function stronger, and so forth. So food is blood. We get into the mind-body connection. We have a weekend called the Barefoot Doctor where we would do home remedies. We do some compresses, and we do some simple uh, kind of qigong, Doen exercises where you start to experience the whole theme of, you know, coming from your hara or your center and how to get your breath down into the body so that you get more grounded, right? So you start to learn the whole body-mind connection, which is not a loose system for us. You've heard the term, oh yes, mind and body connected. Well, in Chinese medicine, it's very, very clear. In Ayurvedic, it's very, very clear these connections between the physical, emotional, and the spiritual. Right? It's not a loose system, very defined. Of course, we'll be talking about you know, supportive lifestyle strategies. Um, <clears throat> uh, the good thing about this training is also finding your soul group, which I think is very, very important. You can't do this work yourself. If you know, it's very, you know, basically, guys, you're taking on the big one to begin with. Your daily rituals around food is deeply ingrained in you from the word go up to seven years old, right? Now, you probably know from, you know, uh, psychiatry that we basically, in that first seven years, we learn everything from the parents or the adults around us, and we strongly impacted by their thinking, their attitude, and their food patterns that you grew up with. That's why people find it very, very hard to shift out of, yes, there's a lot of good information on the internet and there's books coming out, it's that we're still getting all the terrible um, uh, health statistics. It's not really shifting. You know, heart disease is still skyrocketing. Uh, uh, cancer is still skyrocketing. People are still feeling miserable, right? Right? It takes a lot to actually shift out of that. Basically, all that happens is you start to get some positive daily habits and those negative ones start to melt away into a point where you've totally forgotten about them. That's all that happens. Right? To achieve that, you really need uh, you know, some support, some insight, some encouragement, some feedback, and so forth. Right? You don't want to do it yourself. You want to find your soul group. Uh, of course, education is important and practical skills, very, very important, right, uh, around food as medicine, developing your cooking, developing the art of cooking. Uh, a little sideline here about our approach to, uh, you know, the disease process. Basically, in a nutshell, it's a buildup of acids and toxins and, of course, uh, sometimes a lot of nutritional deficiencies. In Chinese medicine, we have concepts like stuck energy, uh, the digestive syndrome, uh, and so forth. And then uh, that starts to build up into emotional ups and downs, uh, stress and tension starting to build up in the body, and then ultimately a you know, an arrogance and a separation from life. So in the West, we often talk about disease, right? but we don't talk about actually what is health. In fact, our Western definition of health, do you know what it is? The medical definition of health is there's no symptoms. That's it, full stop, that's where it finishes. Whereas in, you know, Taoism, Ayurveda, and some of the great wisdoms are of, of, of the world, you know, uh, health is not just an absence of disease, health is you know, like a personal evolution, right? On a fundamental level, your um, energy should be good during the day. You need to be able to sleep really, really well. There should be a sense of a, a good flow in life. Uh, there should be some clarity in thinking and doing. Uh, your uh, intuition should just kick in whenever you want it, right? And that's about getting your blood chemistry really aligned, you know, with these sort of forces of heaven and earth, right? 
uh, and also then aligning with your sense of virtue and values and you know the sense of uh, you know following your dream following what you really really want to do in life right and ultimately uh, the spirituality around food is a sense of oneness uh, freedom and a deep sense of uh, gratitude for everything in your life Uh, as mentioned, we get into uh, health assessment. Um, we, what's very important here, and not often talked about, and I think it's vitally important, is to understand your type of constitution. Now, in the West, we have this tendency to go, oh, look, here's a diet, you know, like the South Beach diet, which is not too bad, actually, the South Beach diet. I like re reading about all of them. But they kind of go, okay, it's for what? everybody have you noticed that or here's a raw food diet and here it is and it's good for everybody right? or here's the paleo diet here it is da 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 write it out sell a million books and it's good for everybody well we go no uh uh we're all kind of like different constitutional types some of us are fast metabolism some of us are slow metabolisms have you noticed that you know, some of your friends could eat uh, some, like a cream bun, and then they're complaining about they just put on weight for the next three days, and they go, I shouldn't have eaten that. Where some other friends, their metabolism is quite rapid. You know, they can eat like a horse and never put on weight. Have you noticed that? Well, in Chinese medicine, we have these four body types. We use terms like um, excess yang and excess yin and uh, sort of yin shu and so forth, right? And in Ayurvedic, we have the doshas. You've probably heard of it. You know, the sort of sense of kapha and pitta and, and so forth, right? It's very, very important. Because ultimately, food as medicine needs to be about looking after your constitution. That's it in a nutshell. If you want to live a long and healthy life, you have to look after your constitution. You can't burn out your constitution. There's lots of foods that burn out our constitution. There's lots of lifestyles that just burns out the juice from your constitution. And you die early or you get diseases very, very early in life, right? So eating for your constitution is very important. Learning the body types, in my opinion, is very, very important. So we have a whole weekend on health ass assessment and you becoming like your own kind of doctor around this and starting to take certain uh, symptoms that people are complaining about and putting them into an energetic pattern in the body, right? Okay, and our nutritional coaching program is recognized by the American Association of Drugless Practitioners. So we basically train people to uh, become specialists in the longevity diet, to become life coaches, to, to, to become health coaches. Uh, you are not uh, a licensed nutritionist, right? This is not a university degree. Uh, you know, you're not be, uh, you won't be working in hospitals and so forth. However, a lot of our uh, graduates have ended up working with doctors, right? And have worked with uh, all sorts of um, holistic health practitioners, complementary. Have you noticed doctors, uh, you know, the, the only time that they have uh, as the client walks out the door, they go, oh, oh, yes, and don't forget, Mr. Smith, uh, don't forget to have a balanced diet. Right? That's about as far as they get, don't they? Whereas we have to spend hours with our clients. We have to spend months with our average client to get them onto uh, an approach that's really strong and healthy and grounded and focused. It takes a lot, remember, to get people out of those ingrained negative habits. You know? So there's a place for this. Uh, and we look into how you can uh, build your business uh, in this training. Uh, so for instance, my module one, we, the first weekend, we look at all the principles around natural healing, uh, the, we get right into the food energetics and we get into the ingredients of the longevity diet. Uh, and then I start to teach you the fundamentals of understanding yin and yang and the five element theory, uh, which is very, very important. The five elements sort of pervades everything in Chinese medicine. Um, then the following weekend is your first cooking class with Inga. So uh, Inga's uh, an incredible teacher, 
she's a graduate of this program. She's originally from Russia. Uh, uh, amazing, you know, she's also done a lot of studies with um, herbalism and so forth. Uh, she really knows uh, where the, this curriculum is coming from and a uh, very, very inspiring teacher. This first uh, cooking class, she takes you through all of the, you know, the ingredients and how to start to put it into, you know, practice, right? And you get to, the important thing here is you get to taste it and eat it. Remember, that's why I started this cooking school 35 years ago, because my clients were going like, well, how do you make the soup? And how do you, you know, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> and if you, and you start to uh, you show them, they, they've got it. And they walk away and they do it, right? That's why I've been crazy enough to run a cooking school for 35 years. And believe me, you have to be crazy. Nobody else does it. Have you noticed? You go off and do a nutritional course, it's all blah, 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 read this, theory, 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 and you don't even, there's not even a herb in the class. There's not even, you know, well, we're not like that. You know, we, ha we get messy in the kitchen here, you know, and we're going to feed you and we're going to inspire you with some new tastes, new combinations, so that you go, wow, I, I just want to repeat that for the next month back at home. That's basically the experiential side of this training. That's what we, that's all we're asking you to do to a degree in this uh, training, right? So Inga's uh, getting you inspired to do that. Nam Seen is, um, he has this amazing background. He's African American. Uh, he grew up in a military family, but his, his grandfather was from Nigeria and his grandfather got sick when he was uh, trading, he was a merchant trader in Taiwan. And Western medicine didn't fix him, and he went to a Chinese doctor, and it fixed him. So Nam Singh's grandfather sponsored Nam Singh to go back to a Taoist Taiwanese monast monastery from the age of five all the way through to 20. He has this remarkable background. And he was one of the pioneers of acupuncture and Chinese medicine in California. He's, he's from South uh, San Francisco. However, so yes, he's a master of what we call all the eight rays of Chinese medicine, the feng shui, the herbs, the, you know, blah, blah. However, his passion, of course, is what? Cooking, the culinary arts, you know, which for us is the first step of medicine. The first step of medicine is education and food. The next step is massage. The next step is things like acupuncture and sauna and and then the next step is therapy. You know, there's a place for everything. Get the idea? So he's this, uh, we do a Chinatown tour with him. So when he comes in April, that Friday before, we're down Chinatown. He knows these foods and herbs like the back of his hand. He knows how to prepare it, what their energetics are. Uh, he's an amazing chef. Uh, and that's what I meant. We show you how to do it economically. Right? You don't, you know, some of the herbs that you buy in the tinctures, you know, some of the high quality, but they can be like $40, you know, for a Hoshu Wu, right? Well, we'll show you how to, you know, for a couple of bucks, how to buy some Hoshu Wu and make a broth and make a really strong tea out of it. So we're very much into the economics as well. There's a lot of fun, the Chinatown tour, and that's the Friday before his training in next April. As mentioned, I do the Barefoot Doctor. We do some Shiatsu, some compresses. Uh, some acupressure, uh, some um, uh, kitchen pharmacy, Inga's uh, superfood tonic elixirs and healing protocols is uh, one of the trainings. Uh, the superfoods have come out now, have you noticed? Right? I think what's missing from the superfoods is actually just some of the energetic understanding. You've all heard that, yes, it's full of uh, antioxidants and so forth, right? But we, we take a different approach. You know, we, we look at, at, you know, it's good for the kidneys, is it good for the jing of the body, is it good for the blood of the body, right? But, um, and we get into like how to make, make these superfoods really, 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 really tasty, right? Uh, I've mentioned the health assessment module, and I've also mentioned this uh, module that we do with um, uh, Western supplements. Then uh, building your business module, so, we got up to, the course is also available as an online training. Now what can happen guys is, some people do this training online from all over the world and from other parts of America. So you can do the whole program online. Okay? 
then people do a combination of both. So for instance, some of our students live in San Francisco, they can watch some of the theory and philosophy classes online, but then we just really encourage them to come to the practical cooking classes because that's where you're experiencing this on, you know, that kind of level that we want you to experience it on. And then the good news is if you miss any of the modules here in New York, you can catch up, right? Or you can review a module. So we do have it as a online training as well. Uh, so graduation is um, uh, 10 uh, modules spaced over the year. We've got the timetable in your uh, workbook uh, that was on the chair. Um, we have wonderful course uh, material. There is an example of the workbook uh, up here on the table that's about this thick. So we, we give it to you. There is an online uh, classroom and the PDFs that you basically download. So we have some really, really great, unique, specially written uh, for the, the training. You know, that basically material that you won't get anywhere else. Um, so yes, graduation. Uh, there is a project that is required for graduation. So for instance, uh, about two thirds of the way through the training, uh, we talk about how you need to do a, like a little bit of a project, which is basically a creative project if you want. Some t sometimes people have done like little booklets. Uh, one person did uh, f food as medicine for dogs. She did this beautiful book for dogs, right? Uh, so it can be creative, but uh, it can be academic, you know, like basically you micro study something like maybe diabetes and then how the uh, longevity diet can work for that, right? Uh, so uh, these are some of our uh, graduates uh, from the program. Um, you know, we've got uh, lots of testimonials up on the website. We've had um, some very, very uh, interesting chefs doing this program. So here they are. They're really, you know, they're already like this guy was a whole food chef, well known in Iceland, but he really wanted to do our training to get to know the, en he still didn't know the energetics. Right? Didn't know the internal dialogue of it all, right? And wasn't familiar with a lot of the ingredients, in fact, even though he's been doing um, whole food cooking. Certainly wasn't uh, uh, knowledgeable around any of the superfoods and, and um, you know, some of the tonic herbs, right? Um, Nikki went on to create a very, very successful um, corporate style coaching program here in uh, uh, Manhattan. I think she has about seven uh, uh, other nutritional coaches working for her. So uh, we got up to that time of the evening and I am going to take some questions but just let me you know run through everything. Uh, so the tuition. So we have a couple of things uh, going that and there's one thing that's very very special for tonight because basically this is the last um, orientation that we're doing before we enter into the summer months, right? Basically the kind of the school closes down a little bit, right? And uh, we don't do any more orientations until one more just before the course starts, right? So we do have a special offer that I'm, go I'm gonna talk about. So for instance, uh, the course starts at 5,700. However, uh, if you're, um, doing two things, you can pay for the course up front, and you'll see tonight that you can actually get $1,300 off that, right, because of our special uh, that we're offering tonight. And we also have a, um, a payment plan. So let's just go through that. So for the full payment, uh, you get $500 off. For um, attending an orientation and you sign up, uh, and you do that within 24 hours, but there's also an extra $500 that's actually happening because this is the last uh, orientation for the season, right? So that's the, sp you know, we don't offer that uh, normally at all, right? Um, so basically you can get it right down to 4,400. Now, if you're on the payment plan, so, you know, the course starts here, 5,700. Now, by attending the orientation and signing up tonight, 300, 
The special offer is also for the payment plan, so 500, right? So you're getting it down to 4,900. You start the payment plan with a $600 deposit, you know, uh, today or within 24 hours, right? So then you can get it down to 430, right? Now the good news, if you do that, uh, you know, tonight or tomorrow, then we release some, of the, we, we, we will release the online version of this program before you start the in-house in October. And I highly recommend that if you're serious about this uh, training, that you actually look at the online a little bit over the coming summer months, right? You might only do two of those modules, my uh, philosophy one, and then Inga's first practical cooking. And that's really, really good because then when you show up for class, you've kind of heard it before. And we always do it a little bit different and we always take some different angles, but you're kind of a little bit more up to speed. So it's a way of actually getting you started. You don't have to wait for October. So that's with the special uh, tonight. The course begins on the 12th and the 13th. The training is in this room. We love this room and it's the right scale for us. Our training is intimate. We don't want, we, because of the practical cooking, we can only uh, have 30 people. So basically, uh, you know, it's first in, first served. We limit it to 30 people. We actually have a, a kitchen upstairs that we do a lot of prep work the night before. We put some tables down here with some burners and our, uh, you know, chopping knives and, and so forth. And basically this becomes our cooking school here, right? So it's demo style cooking. There's a lot of teaching, but there's several uh, recipes that you experience each weekend, right? So over the training, you know, you've ended up with dozens of new dishes and uh, learning about, you know, the dynamics of these uh, uh, ingredients and so forth, right? That's the whole schedule. Now, Remember I said we have four practical cooking classes, so they are here in red, right? So if you are, you know, thinking of doing some of it online, you know, but you really want to get to the practical uh, cooking classes. And notice here with uh, Nam Singh's class that Friday, there's a Chinatown tour. And notice here with Leifa. Leifa is an absolute expert on Ayurvedic, but she's, she's very well known, she's a uh, very well known um, author around Asian healing and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, beauty secrets. Uh, you should check out her books. And she does this really, really groovy uh, tour of India town down in the uh, East Village. There's uh, several Indian shops there, so she, she, she would show you the, the herbs and the spices and all the energetics, right? So it's a fun thing to do before uh, their classes, their weekend workshops, right? So that's the schedule. You've got that in the, um, uh, the workbook there. And that's us. You can always call, uh, call me directly uh, tomorrow if you're still thinking about signing up. You've got 24 hours for that uh, special. Um, you know, we can extend it a little bit if you're still really on the, you know, the uh, sitting on the fence. So let's do some questions. Yeah. What are the hours on the Yeah, so our hours are always 9.30 to 5 each day. And, you know, you can arrive a little bit early, of course. And, but, yeah, 9.30 to 5 each day. Yeah. Um, so, with those, are you a uh, holistic health practitioner? Yeah. Is that separate from being nutritionist? Or well, it's, um, remember, you know, you can use the word nutritionist, right? Mm -hmm. But you just have to be careful that you're not licensed nutritionist. So, you won't be licensed, but you can practice? Well, license is uh, university training. Okay. You know, it's a Bachelor of Science, you know, in nutrition. Right. It takes four years. Right? And remember, they're the people that design the food that are in hospital. Yeah. I, r I rest my case, right. you know. Okay. They're the people that said, you know, don't, don't, don't have any saturated fats and eat these vegetable oils for the last 30 years, you know. They're, they're being very, very naughty, in my opinion, and they should own up, <laughs> right? 
And uh, so you have to be careful that you are not a licensed nutritionist. You're a um, longevity diet specialist. Um, you're a health coach. You're a natural health practitioner, right? That's you, basically the coaching phenomena is, is massive now, right? And a lot of people are just like doing business coaching or life coaching. The angle that we're coming from is more like uh, food as medicine coaching, getting people off that wicked standard American diet and getting them on to something that's, you know, that's going to, first of all, fix up their blood sugar problems, fix up that headache. You know, you've always got to work with those immediate problems. Fix up that poor digestion. You work on that. But, and then, you know, taking people on a program that's three months, six months, you know, this is not just done with one uh, consultation, right? So you're taking them on a journey. And basically, you take them on the journey of what you discovered in, in yourself, first of all, for your own healing, right? And then using all the school's resources. All you, we give you a lot. We give you the... You know, we give you the recipes, we give you the, you know, the approach, we give you uh, a lot of um, resources, you know, in, including, f you know, client forms and things like that, right? So that's the um, kind of angle, right? And, uh, you know, there's not many people doing, there's people d who do Western nutrition, right? And like, th there's a huge difference, you know, they, they would still recommend ice cream, you know. Ice cream for us is one of the evil foods, you know, if you want to do damage, you know, ice cream every day, that's a recipe for disaster. I mean, ice cream for like a fun thing, that's, that's fun, that's okay, right. So there's just a world of difference between Western medicine and what, uh, nutrition and what we're, the, the energetics that we come from, right. So we've got a nice little uh, niche with it, yeah. And people respond to this really well. It's really, really interesting because people, you know, with their symptoms, they talk about, I'm too hot, I'm too cold. You know, I, you know, I have this ache, you know, it hurts, you know. That, and that's the language that you learn to work with in Chinese medicine. You know, we have these sort of themes like, you know, we look at things environmentally. Some people get too wet, too damp, some people get too dry. Some people get too hot, some people get too cold. That's, you know. So, yes, it is a bit of a crash course in uh, Chinese medicine, but we're not training you to be acupuncturists. It's, we're not training you to be, uh, you know, uh, a herbalist. By the way, those herbalists don't even know how to cook with those herbs. They don't. I believe me, I've been around all this game a lot. You know, they learn how to make a formula good on them, but they don't know how to make a, a broth or a tea or a soup or a congee. They, they don't know it. So we, we've got a wonderful niche here that people have forgotten about, you know, and we haven't. You know, food is medicine. That's a very, very important... That should be the foundation for everybody, and guess what? It's not. It's only, you know, 99% of the people, it's not their foundation. This, is, uh, this curriculum is about making that foundation again. Yeah. So, yeah, there's lots of um, pathways there for career. But it can't, it's just not... Uh, coaching, by the way, it can be, you know, the media, it can be blogging, journalism, uh, activism, you know, uh, we've just been a good mother, <laughs> you know, having healthy children, you know, there's so many things, so many things. Yeah. Once you enroll in the program, do you have unlimited access in, for future once you graduate? You do, actually, and yeah. Do, can you also pop in on any of the classes? You you yeah, we, we, we really encourage that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we really encourage our students to come back and yes. And yeah, especially uh, also, don't forget, if you've missed, if you missed, like you, if you missed one of co Inga's cooking classes and then you watched it online, which is okay, but if you wanted to come back and experience that, absolutely. Is there no anything, extra cost. No, no, is there anything after that? Like it will continue? No, just the end of the world is after <laughs> that. <laughs> no, it's all down, once like the course finishes, another, it's all downhill. Another, you know? No, because everything that uh, we want to give you, we've done in a very intense, concentrated way over 10 months. We just lay it on, and I don't have anything more to give you. It's okay. all there in those 10 modules, okay. big time. The only other thing that we do, just so you know, is for instance, we're putting on uh, the tour to China. Some of folks might have seen that. That's in September. That's pretty much, uh, you know, it's 
sort of finalized, you know. Uh, we, we're, I'm doing a retreat in South France uh, in September as well, but that's more, yes, it's beautiful French whole food cooking, but it's more like the technologies that Al and I do, like the breakthrough technologies, thinking outside of the box. But it's, it's, I, it's all part of a holistic approach for me. You know, if you get into this, you become an environmentalist and you really want to get off the fossil fuels eventually, you know. What's the limit in the students that you will take in a new enrollment? What's the limit number? I mean... 30. 30, okay. Yeah. Because I see you have an open house like a couple of days before you launch. So at that point, will it be space available for Well, we, you know, the, uh, well, that's the right question. Uh, we uh, basically encourage everybody to get their deposit in, if, you know, if you're still thinking about it, one month before the course starts. And that way, you know, and the, the earlier the better, mm -hmm. you know, but basically our number is 30, you know. So uh, okay. we've already got people who have, you know, put a deposit on the course, so we're you know, starting to get there, you know. But it's still, there's still room. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so let's do some, uh, any other questions? Pretty much kind of covered most of it. I think you get the gist of it. So this tea that you're drinking, uh, it's called Spring Dragon, and it's from a company called dragonherbs.com, and they're in California, and it was founded by uh, Tear Garden. And he was one of the pioneers of Chinese herbalism in America, and he's been back to China like about 700 times, no kidding, from the 1960s. So really high quality tonic herbs. Now, this tea is from a grass tea called Gynostema, and it's got 120 saponins in it. It's just an amazing tea. But it's also got some ava herbs in there. It's not a stimulant, right, so you can take this tea in the evening and it, it's it, technically it's what we call an adaptogenic. So adaptogenic is a like a category of herbs that it, that they, it gives you what you need. They're, they're that intelligent, chemically intelligent, that they give you what you need at that time. So you can have this in the morning and it kind of gives you a little bit of a buzz. Not as much as green tea because it's got, got no caffeine, but kind of like a buzz. Uh, but just wonderful for strengthening the immune system and kind of washing out. It's, saponins are actually like uh, a, a, the, the soapiness, the silkiness of the, uh, of the plant. Right? So it's kind of like giving your cells a good, like a shower in the morning, you know, getting rid of the waste products. The area of China where they drink this tea, Gynostema, they live on average 20 to 25 years longer than anywhere else in China. Now the Chinese historically used to do pretty well with their longevity, but this region, they only, they, by the way, they only figured this out in the 1970s. They came to this region, they went, why are you people living, you know, 20 years longer? And they studied their diet, they studied their water, right? And it wasn't until one day somebody noticed, you know, somebody walking around with this, you know, jar, jar of tea. It's a jar of tea in China. I don't know if you've been to China, but everybody walks around. It's like a jam jar. They make their tea in a, and they seal it with like a jam jar. And anyway, the, the researcher went, what are you drinking? And he said, poor man's ginseng. And they put it under the microscope and guess what? 120 saponins. Right? So spring dragon. So if you're not doing the course, but you still want to try to attempt to live to 150, I highly recommend that tea as a takeaway, right? So guys, uh, we're right on time. Uh, any happy to do the enrollments tonight? Remember that deal's going down tonight. Uh, another $500 offered on, it's, it hasn't been offered any other time uh, in any of the orientations and so forth. We will have a webinar if, uh, this coming Wednesday that we're going to offer it, just, you know, to be quite frank. Uh, but that's for the online, you know, people who are interested. We will be offering it there if anybody knows some friends. Uh, you'll see that memo going out on the newsletter. So, yeah, if you want to sign up and look at the workbook or look at the brochures, um, Indira and Anna are over there at the 
the table. So thanks for coming tonight, guys. Hope to see some of you uh, in the training.